Hello, my name is Kevin. I'll be covering over some of the Excel for Mac. I'm actually going to go through the whole program from start to finish in my weekly podcast. So I hope you're as excited as I am to actually understand this program. It's very frustrating trying to find resources out there for Microsoft Excel, so I figured I would just start by myself. So the big thing with Microsoft Excel, especially for the Mac, is it's changed dramatically since the previous versions. Microsoft has done this on the Windows side as well, so it's not going away. So instead of me trying to understand older versions and making it apply to the newer versions, it's time to actually just learn the new version. When you launch Microsoft Excel for the first time, it actually comes up with a template kind of settings there. They have a whole bunch of different templates that come with it. They break it up with categories. Or if you actually make your own layouts, which I'll teach you how to do, you can save them as a template so that way later you can go at it without remaking the sheet over and over again. But for now, we're just going to start with a basic Excel workbook. Wow, the new Excel does look radically different. It's a lot cleaner than it was in the past. It's more graphical. So for visual people, this is going to make learning Excel so much easier. The biggest thing Excel has added is this new ribbon right up here on the top. It keeps tools together that normally would go together. So if we're looking to do anything with a chart, I'm one tap away from looking at all my different options that Excel offers with charts, as well as table, layout and home. Home it tends to be the general one. It'll actually show you majority of the options you're going to be using on there. If you're looking to get most of the screen space as you want possible, you can simply click on this arrow over here on the right side to minimize it so that way you get the most use of your data. But right now, that's not the case. You're able to do that by clicking and dragging on the edges and making it give you more of a view. Now, if you're working on a small spreadsheet, I tend to like to keep it taking up the least amount of my windows possible. New to mountain line and line, you actually have a full screen mode where it actually takes the whole screen, gets rid of the menu bar, and if you're looking just to work on data, this is where you want to do it. Now, you might be asking, me which one's the best way to work in. Really, it's a personal preference. I just don't like it covering my entire screen. So here's a basic spreadsheet where we have our header row, which is in which takes up all of row one. I'm currently using column A, B, C, and D with information. But let's say I would like to add another column in there. I can just click on column E1 and type in data like so. And I can keep going and adding more and more fields as necessary. Now sometimes these cells are a little wider than they need to be so we can actually shrink them by putting your mouse in between it forms this X and I can actually make it take up a lot less space than I want to. And make some of them bigger because they require more information. For example, order in sets of 10. So I can put my notes right in here. Now, you can organize data. I can go under my data ribbon and take a look at my filter. So I want to filter my suppliers to where all I see are my bings. So now, when I'm on the phone with my distributor, 
I know everything I'd have to order within one click. I can clear the filter with one click. I can just click on certain ones if I wanted to. at the same time. That filter is always there. And I can always reorganize it the way I want to. I can add a filter to each row if I would like to, as well as create pivot tables. Which I'll get to that later. I can change the format of those cells by going to my home tab under here I can go to currency now if these number symbols show up what that means is you have to widen the column for it to show more of that data 